Slow Food Birmingham um, is part of the, the wider slow food movement around the world that covers about 160 different countries. And from a grassroots level, it's all volunteer run. Um, so we are one of um, many slow food groups within the UK that are all volunteer run. Um, and the reason we chose uh, the jewellery quarter um, as our location for our first food hub was because there were no independent food stores within, within the um, confines of the JQ. Um, and we set about working out how to do that. Uh, we looked at whether or not we would run a monthly food market and we decided that that was more of an activity rather than a way to help people change their um, access to food on a regular basis. And so we partnered up with um, 1000 Trades and they um, host our farm shop in the city uh, every Wednesday night. Um, and so over the last 18 months, we have had about 300 and what we have had, no about 327 people shop with us over that time. What we have noticed is that we see people who have been with us right from the get go. And uh, we see other people who dip in and out. Um, and we're in the process of working out what it is that makes people dip in and out or not return um, and work out the, how often people people shop and things like that. So that's we need we need some time to do some um, some data gathering. Um, but the great thing about it is that it's actually given us a chance to talk about what slow food is, um, and and we're really building a community. So um, we we have a host of volunteers, and we have um, lots of wonderful locals um, who who shop with us and, and help us out. What we find is every couple of months, we put another call out for volunteers. Um, and so we have a, a, a cycle of, uh, of people who are helping so that nobody feels like they're getting burnt out. Um, and, and the partnership, I think, listening to uh, Rachel talking about um, the partnerships with their school is very much the same that we have with a thousand trades. It's, um, it's, it's currently only open um, on a Wednesday for us. Um, and um, we are incredibly grateful that they have, uh, they, they opened their doors up so that we can still continue to, um, to have people come and pick up. We've also started to operate a home delivery service, but it's not our intention to make that a um, a permanent part of, of what we do. I really like the idea um, that Dee talked about of um, encouraging people to pick up for a neighbour um, and we might look at that. Um, but the big benefit of what we do is that we want people to know that they're not the only people out there who want to change the food system or um, who want to access better food. Um, so... Some of our operating things. So um, like most food hubs, we, we take a 20% commission on sales, um, but unlike others, um, Slow Food itself has um, business, food businesses that are um, supporters of Slow Food. And we have quite a few of those businesses who provide uh, produce to us. What we have decided is that um, on a quarterly basis, we um, we actually give them back 5% of our 20% commission that we took from them as a, um, a thank you for, for helping us um, with our conversation, which because we are completely not-for-profit and we haven't got any overheads for running, uh, we are able to do that. Um, the rest of the profit that we make, we put back into our projects as well. Um, well, in the process of getting our butcher to move away from plastic, um, it's been a, it's a very long, slow process working with somebody who um, absolutely believes that plastic is the only way that you can you can transport um, meat products. 
Um, and so what we have decided is that we're going to put a surcharge onto all of the meat products so that it will show up in the pie graph that says we are funding plastic free uh, wrapping from this butcher and, and in the hope that eventually um, they will say, absolutely, we're on board, but we're not only doing it for your food hub, we're doing it across our business. Um, so that was um, one of, the, one of the, the things that we think that we can make a difference in in the food system. Um, we're also currently doing some research of how much it costs to shop with us and how much it costs to shop with other, other places. And in doing that, we're weighing packaging and we are looking at the fact that you've got to buy twice as much of something because it comes in a bag and, um, and the variety. So working towards that, um, um, a good health 30 different things in your diet each week um, and things like that. So um, we tell those stories through our social media, but also when people come and collect, uh, we, we always have a chance for a little chat. And those little chances for a chat have enabled us to do some wonderful things. Um, we work with a group called Incredible Surplus and they uh, collect surplus food um, from supermarkets and other food, food places and they um, distribute that to across the network that is now called the Food Justice Network Brum Together. It's about 120 groups that work across our city. And we've been working with Incredible Surplus. So they'll turn up and they'll say, okay, so we've got caviar and um, caviar and um, oysters in a jar. And um, what are we going to do with this fancy mirror? Uh, and we've got all sorts of things that they know that most of their customers wouldn't uh, most of the people receiving food emergency bags wouldn't have the ability to do something with it. So we are selling those um, and in lieu of a donation. Um, and, it, and it's been a really great way because so many people are unaware of how much waste supermarkets have. So we've, we've, we've been able to do that. But that money has then funded our Bags of Taste cooking pilot in Birmingham. And this is a project that teaches people how to cook meals for one pound. Um, and that le leads into our food justice um, project. Um, we also work really closely with another community connection project called Eat Make Play um, in Ladywood. And um, they have access to um, a new venue, um, which has been donated to them by the NHS. Um, and to our amazement, the NHS is actually going to provide it to us for a very small peppercorn rate. And it sounds sort of like it's the, it's the beginning of what the Cambridge Hub are doing, um, where we hope that we'll be the central collection point and we'll, we'll fund some businesses and things to start up. Um, so I, I was fascinated to, um, to hear about the Cambridge work. So yeah, Eat, Eat Make Play is now working with us. And the idea is that we will work with Incredible Surplus. And this is one of the fantastic meals that was cooked through the Bags of Taste project. Um, and unlike the Slow Food JQ Hub, this will be um, a completely different price point of food. Um, it will be designed for people who are definitely on um, different incomes than um, the village on the edge of the city that the jewellery quarter is known for. And we're going to offer different ways that people can shop with us. So our sol sol solidarity shopper, shopper is the person who can afford to shop with us and can afford to pay a little more and want that put towards supporting the work that we do or um, giving a discount to somebody who may not be able to afford their weekly shop. We'll, uh, we'll also offer a standard weekly shop. So you choose what you want from our food hub and come and collect it from your collection point. We're introducing a trader box for volunteers because we recognize that whilst 
so many of the volunteers that work within the Eat, Make, Play and the broader food um, justice movement um, are people who are on universal credit um, or for whatever means um, have a limited capped income. But what we're doing is we're saying to them, if you've given some of your time, we're going to trade it back to you with fruit and veg. Um, and we think that that will probably make a really big difference on a lot of people's lives. And then we're also working to be able to set up um, discounts and free veg boxes for people who have vouch food vouchers or are referred through the NHS. Um, and um, it's not a straightforward process, but with the help of Louise um, and Open Food Network, we think that we've, we've, we're ready and we've cracked that one. Um, so that is just a little about what, we, what we've been doing. Great, thank you so much, Kate. And yeah, always really fascinating to hear about all the work and all the different projects that you're doing towards the cause of uh, food equality and food justice. And I'm just gonna, share in the chat a link to a YouTube playlist um, of short clip videos from a webinar we did around food equality where you also shared there um, as well. That might go into some of those into a bit more detail if someone, if, uh, it's in the chat if 